Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Astra Dikas. I am the board member of Estonian Crypto Association. Uh, we are located um, in Tallinn uh, in our uh, small and cool office. Uh, this is our new stage. And uh, I welcome you today uh, for our, I don't know which event it is, but it's uh, one of these cool ones. <laughs> And uh, today we're going to focus um, on crypto payments adoption. Uh, why? Uh, because it feels like it's um, it's a time. It's about the time, because crypto is uh, is becoming more and more and more mainstream. This is what we all can say, um, especially us, because we see the big picture from the inside. Yeah. But uh, what I want to um, I want to say aloud that the Estonian Crypto Association is not only for crypto companies or not only for uh, people who know a lot about crypto. It's also for companies who don't know anything about crypto and want to know about how, let's say, how to adopt uh, with a new um, whole crypto system. Yeah. And uh, today we're going to discuss from scratch some things and some people might uh, find like complicated words and uh, think like, oh my God, why I'm here? I don't know anything about this. It doesn't matter. You have to begin uh, from somewhere. And if you know already so much, um, then also I hope that you will get uh, at least some details uh, from this event because uh, we're going to discuss really uh, into details, uh, let's say, how the usual company can adopt crypto payments, what they have to do uh, from AML perspective, for example. Um, and after we have finished the uh, official setup, then, of course, for the people who are here, it's a wonderful time to uh, network and uh, have a nice chat. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming. Mm, let's begin. Uh, so, first guest today with us is um, Button PS. Yeah, welcome to the stage. Hello. Hi. You are here from uh, Founderly. Yes. Do you want to make a short intro? What is Founderly and why are you existing? Why am I existing? Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, my name is Watan, and uh, for all of you who are from Estonia, it's like Ma Watan. So Watan is my name, and uh, I'm a startup influencer, and uh, and I'm involved in startup ecosystem in multiple ways, uh, from founding founderly to venture investing and uh, company building as well. Sometimes, and uh, founderly is all about uh, building a foundation, uh, so founders uh, can build a resilient mindset. So the success can be guaranteed or success can be improved because we all know 90% startups fail. We are working in that direction to reduce that number down to let's say 50%. So this is the focus area of Founderly and uh, Founderly is already uh, have supported teams from 28 plus countries and expand, expanding so much fast. So yeah, that's, that's Founderly in nutshell. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And um, we wanted to, I mean, I wanted to ask from you, uh, this is why you are here, because I invited you here. Yeah, that's simple. Uh, but also, I wanted to ask from your perspective, as you are uh, more into startup, let's say, um, environment, and you see the different picture that we see. Uh, you see startups who just begin. You see companies uh, who are, let's say, second stage, third stage. They're like, the growth is the main thing. So what is your opinion? How many of these um, companies or startups, how much they know about? What is happening in crypto markets? What is happening in crypto payments adoption? What are the um, what are the op uh, opportunities there? Mm -hmm. Is there information moving right now, or is it like they don't know anything? Um, I would say definitely it's moving uh, because Web three is definitely successful marketing of crypto space or blockchain, and uh, because uh, the the VCs were not taking it seriously, uh, but uh, everything got changed. Uh, since last year, right? Uh, last year, they invested around $27 billion. And this year, they have already invested that much in like first two quarters. 
so so things are going uh, very uh, very on a high, uh, high pace and uh, i would say like definitely things are happening and uh, web3 is becoming um, and going mainstream and uh, but uh, one thing is still there uh, when it comes to crypto and when it comes to any web3 project people still have uh, this kind of hesitation to adopt it um, and the reason is very simple because of a lot of uh, scams uh, in the industry and a lot of uh, you know like thefts all the time a lot of news uh, are breaking up like uh, somebody stole 500 million and binance uh, recently had this uh, incident you know so so this is one of the uh, scary factor there uh, but uh, but in the terms of uh, adoption is happening definitely mm -hmm. is happening mm -hmm. okay thank you and um Right now, Founder together with Estonian Crypto Association is uh, doing the third wave, uh, whereas the Coinspade is one of the supporters, the main supporters, uh, together with Swapkin. And in this third wave, um, uh, how uh, how can you say what's the um, like a short let's say feedback? What's going on there? Like how many of the participants are there? Like from totally mainstream? Uh, companies, people, and how many of them are already into crypto? What is the interest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, let me give you a bit of context uh, why we started that program. Because uh, when it comes to startup ecosystem, you know, uh, people talk about it all the time, Web3, and uh, it's very cool. But what is Web3 for them? You know, for them, Web3 means NFTs, right? Uh, NFTs, uh, or let's say a bit of uh, cryptocurrencies. And when they say cryptocurrencies, that mostly means uh, Bitcoin right or sometimes ethereum as well uh they don't have any idea what's going on in this space right and uh, we wanted to build that bridge uh, so we can help them uh, get educated on everything when it comes to uh, uh, web3 including defi what is dao uh, how these things work and that's why we brought on a lot of speakers who are experts building companies in 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 that area and um, and when it comes to the audience and the participants so we have already 250 participants there right now and most of them are not Web3 people. Um, they're not. And uh, including uh, some people are from policymaking, uh, regulators, auditors. Um, and uh, I think uh, right now we have people from 19 countries in the program. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> and they will be all educated. Uh, and um, what do you think, the last question, um, what do you think, what is, what is the reason why, let's say, startup? uh or estonian usual company let's say five up to ten workers employees um why they should adopt crypto payments uh, it's very simple actually you know like uh, uh there's a very famous quote uh when people say uh necessity uh is the mother of uh, uh innovation you know if there is a need you have to innovate um and and that's what's going on right now when it comes to NFTs, uh, when it comes to you know crypto adoption, because a lot of big brands are adopting already crypto, and um, on top of that, uh, one thing also happening because uh, Crypto.com did a survey last year, right, and they found out there are 295 million crypto users around the world, 295 million, right, and if the growth stays at the same rate, we will have one billion crypto users by end of this year. Right, that's a huge number, including us. Yeah. Including us, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and why that is important as a company, as a startup. If you are not gonna chase that uh, number of people or group of people, you will miss out. It's very very simple. You know, when in dot com bubble happened, everybody was like going towards like buying dot com. Everybody was like running towards building a website. This, we are in the same uh, era actually right now, and it's gonna take a bit of time. But once we got that. Uh, I think it's very, very important. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna let some people in in the meanwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Thank let you. them in into Web three space. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and um, thank you. It was um, very uh, short, and I would say I I totally agree with this. Yeah. Yeah. Is is there anyone actually? By the way, I have a question for all of you. Is there anyone without a wallet here right now? Crypto wallet. Everybody has a crypto wallet. Oh, you don't have it? Hand. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Please ask people around you. They will let you know. <laughs> okay, there is one people, uh, but one person here, but we don't know how many are there in Zoom, but most probably not so many. Okay. Yeah. Uh,
thank you well thank then you so for much. coming and uh, enjoy the stay uh, we're gonna go move on now with uh, Janar where is he yeah right here you're here thank you so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch uh, the chair I want I want to try out this one yeah maybe it's better <laughs> and mm, so many of you you are already very experienced in uh, having crypto wallets uh, making different accounts for companies and uh, for your company or for your personal um, use but many of you have not done that yet and Janar is here uh, to give you uh, to give you a short introduction uh, how to do what and some technical aspects uh, some some risk assessments and um, we hope that even though all of us we not all of us but except one we have the wallets wallets and we have this experience even if we are leading companies and we're experienced sometimes we, we miss something so and it's always useful to um, to learn so let's give Jana a word I'm mm -hmm. talking too much. Thank you. Uh, maybe you can do a short intro. What is your background and why are you a member yeah. of Estonian Crypto Association? I will also, I will show with my profile. Mm -hmm. It's okay if I will hold the computer. Sure, okay. feel free. You can do whatever okay. you want. Uh -huh. It's, it's okay. the stage. Oh, yeah, you can uh, share the Zoom mm -hmm. screen. Okay. Is now it's working. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give you the stage now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Feel free. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will. I will give. Uh, I Asta told that. Uh, uh some technical part uh, but I, i'm not showing today too deeply uh different uh, wallet and uh, system i i just go through basic and important things and uh, uh, as i understand there is a lot of company owners and merchants i will just show the three ways how to accept crypto payments just i will go through this but my my background uh, so uh, I have been since 2010 in crypto uh, quite long time I have been in crypto industry uh, I have been uh, in mining field quite long time I build my own uh, mining farms and and these things. Uh, Ethereum was my first uh, mining uh, token. It was uh, one or two euro dollar the price, and that. And today I'm also full time AML officer and compliance, working uh, almost almost three years in this field. Uh, and my main focus uh, is uh, educating and coaching people. I help uh, every day people in this uh, crypto uh, crypto field uh, in basic level and uh, also very high skill level. Almost everything: wallet, security, exchanges. KYC is all these things. Uh, also, my everyday activities, uh, I, I look at uh, different uh, new project. Uh, also, I am I have I I develop some uh, I'm developer some some companies. Uh, which uh, which they starting in this uh, cryptocurrency field by helping tokenomics and uh, business plans and all these things. Also, I am 
active data in forex crypto and um, index market uh, also teaching people this this uh, trading fundamental technical and algorithmic trading and uh, yes researching every day different project and how they work and uh, this is my passion okay my at, at, if i go to the um, merchant size uh, the main thing is uh, important to if you're new in this uh, field is uh, basic level knowledge you need to have to, uh, to manage this uh, field uh, how to use cryptocurrency uh, how sending and receiving works different blockchains the speed if you're a merchant you you need to know what is the fastest way if you have this question uh, exchanges how they work what exchanges do you need if you are a business owner you need a business account what's the best for you uh, and also you you need to have basic level of knowledge uh, how to use this exchange uh, how to keep tokens safely how to store them how to how to use if you use every day how to how to how to use them security elements is uh, very important and different wallets how they work decentralized centralized how, how and exchange wallet how they work you have to have this knowledge and main thing is how to avoid the scams and frauds okay these are the basic things you you need to have this uh, uh how i say this uh, skills you don't need to have the high level skill but basic level skills okay let's move on and uh, i will show the three ways how to accept uh, crypto payments and let's see the advantage and disadvantage and uh, i i see three options the one option is to use personal wallet this is a very simple way you just use um, example um, decentralized wallet and uh, customer and merchant just transfer wallet to wallet this is the simple way and uh, i see this works better if you have small company because there are some uh, risk i will show them uh, but it is very easy to use you're just using the qr, the QR code and the uh, merchant can decide himself what currency he accept and uh, advantage I, I see there is a good way to use this because there are no fee there are no any fee in merchants to merchants and uh, if he, if a merchant use decentralized wallet he has full access to tokens he control his tokens and uh, this advantage i have i have two two things what i see the, the negative side that employee can uh, see all transactions because uh, blockchain is open ledger open book and uh, also he has control the wallet he has access to the wallet but there is also different things different tips security tips and uh, how to avoid this there is a there is a also i have a question about this yes so 
what about <coughs> volatility? So if I wanna get like uh, exactly 1,000 euro for bicycle, and someone send me Ethereum, and I'm going to sell this Ethereum like five hours later. So how, how I can be sure that this is enough uh, Ethereum? What I need? yeah, this uh, yeah this is a good question, but in merchant sites he himself decide uh, does he want to exchange this uh, crypto what he, he will get to the stable coin or euro or dollar uh, but the volatility risk is uh, yes the biggest risk in in this accepting uh, but i i will i will go to the part when there is uh, how merchant can manage this risk but yes, this is the risk side. Okay, uh, I will go option two. Uh, there's possibility to use centralized wallet or centralized wallet exchange service. I have name here uh, three the leaders who will offer this uh, service. Basically, they are centralized service. Uh, I have uh, added here example Binance advantage and, and disadvantage. Um, free to use, uh, no fee because it's platform based. Uh, platform based uh, transaction on instant. They are very fast. They support a uh, lot of uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, they are the, they have very big marketplace they have stores they have um, very very uh, big uh, corporating uh, different uh, shops uh, and also they are very large growing their own ecosystem games lotteries their own cards uh, if you use the cards you can get extra bonuses and uh, they, they, I see they are top leader in this field. Also, they have a lot of uh, client. Uh, my statistic is uh, showing that uh, almost 30 million users globally. But in the negative side is uh, centralized exchange. They, they are they have centralized and if there is something uh, going on some client they can freeze account both and uh, i see this is my side this is negative because it work only finance user uh, user have the id or email or um, phone number and also in uh, if you're business owner uh, you need to have you need to have uh, access to the worker and he 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 will get all information your exchange and the negative side i think uh, all, also is limited audience because a uh, lot of lot of people are using decentralized uh, wallets there's a uh, there's a there's a lot of people who is not using centralized system and wallets. Okay, I have also one question here. <clears throat> As a merchant, if I am selling something, let's say I want to get the same one thousand euro, how much time it will take if I, I want to get the funds from uh, finance your to, account to my uh, yeah. Estonian bank account? Uh, okay, if you are uh if you're is it uh, one minute is it one hour two it, days it's the it no no if you are using uh, it, it's you have possibility to use the card also you can get uh, the money or tokens instantly your card finance card and you can yeah, take out when I'm merchant, uh, like yeah say, it's I'm it's a little bit in Estonia, why uh, i need some card so I have yeah but there is also negative side because if you are making a account a corporate account in Binance 
you don't have possibility to withdraw euros in your bank account. That's why you need to have a different exchange, what is accepting business account and uh, but this is the opportunity how you can do. Uh, you I can... understand this is slow and has this is slow. a lot of steps and uh, yes, no yes. Risk. You have to you have you you need to have managed different uh, exchanges. And then transfer one wallet and the wallet exchange. Yes. It will work only like I say if you want to use something yet something uh, different the product, for example. Okay, uh, now I will sh show the, um, my favorite option. Uh, there is a uh, crypto payment uh, service providers. And uh, here are my top best in this field. And uh, they are tools, I mean, very good tools. If merchants buy something, uh, product, and there is a lot of things what you can choose how to manage this. And I will show you advantage. They are very large uh, selection, almost thousand or even more. 2000 uh, cryptocurrencies what they are accepting uh, and there is the volatility risk protection uh, like you you ask and it worked like if if uh, i will pay some product i i and the mer merchant can choose what uh, how this uh, moving this uh, token but uh, just one question you are talking about e-commerce or just uh, Pro for traditional merchants or for whom uh, whatever web shop uh, physical shop whatever example if i am merchant and you come and uh, buy whatever you want example bicycle i will and you choose what you are paying ethereum bnb whatever and uh, if I will get this token, it will automatically swap or exchange to stablecoin. Or I can uh, just take this token and also possibility to swap different tokens. It will manage like a portfolio for this system. But uh, let's say I am, uh, uh, I have a small shop, I am selling bicycles and I am giving you PDF invoice or paper invoice and uh, you want to send me crypto so uh, what are the steps or can you explain for audience also uh, uh, I don't have any like uh, integration or just if I am traditional merchant and I want to accept crypto how this system is working yeah it's uh, there is a it's complicated uh, no no it's not complicated uh, one one thing what I, I didn't I forget to mention here, there is a fee. Uh, and uh, it uh, will be 0 0.5 to 1% is the fee what uh, this uh, provider will taking. But I think this is very low compared to the credit cards. Credit cards have uh, 3.5 is maximum, I think, the fee. But it, but this is the system is very simple. Uh, if uh, if he, if I'm merchant and the client want to pay, uh, it, it he will say I will want to pay John example. Uh, just I have the tab or computer or also some provider has their own terminal. There is a very good uh, uh, tools also. And yeah, but if you are merchant and uh, I am home and you send the invoice to my email so uh, can I like, uh, yeah visit your shop? no if you can uh, if you send uh, if, if the merchant will send the uh, invoice to your email it will automatically uh, have open uh, some uh, some time limit some 
example, you can choose 30 seconds, 30 minutes, for example, and you get QR code, you can just use it. Is in whatever token you accepted or yeah no no it will all it will also generate generate the uh, invoice that's uh, why there need, is a very you need some integration this is already extra step mm, you need to uh, and between this company yeah you need to create account yes. the uh, uh, business account uh, uh, to connect your uh, invoicing system with their system uh, this is also integration as, as i understand no, how, no. How Integration will, is uh, uh, working. Uh, how you will calculate the amount of crypto that you are charging? You will uh, decide yourself. How, as a merchant. Yes, as a merchant, you will yeah, decide. I have to then uh, link my system to with some other system or make the integration to look at that kind of. No, no, you you don't need to ex, uh, uh, integrate. Uh, you 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 have the possibility to integrate the web shop and uh, WooCommerce, Shopify, and these things. But uh, if you just want to simply simply accept, uh, you you just uh, make account in this provider. You get uh, your. Um, I would say you get your like your own profile. This is it. It's very simple. But I can. The, okay, but the profile from where? Uh, in this service provider. You yeah, will get the, your own profile. I'm sending the amount of crypto to my clients because uh, some clients want to use crypto for paying invoice, let's say. And then I'll have to ask uh, which wallet you want to use, or uh, he can choose by himself, or how it will work. He can, he can choose himself. Uh, in the front of the in the casa. During the payment process. Yeah, you can like choose. Said, it ends up being converted into some stable coin. Yes. That you choose as a merchant. You choose. Okay, whenever I get any token, it will get converted into this stable coin. Or yeah, you you, you you can choose the convert also. You can but accept hundred percent. Or, or pay, I'll have to pay taxes and salaries, uh, so I need euros. How uh, uh, you euros can uh, with, there, uh, one minute with one hour. With uh, there is a like a, BitPay is a very big. They have this uh, uh, banking uh, and bank system integration. Also, you can just uh, send your euros or dollars to the, your bank account. But. Uh, I, I don't know Coinbase. I think they have also same system. But they, these are the two. I think the most biggest. This they have this possibility. You can send it, or you can use some other provider if you want to send money uh, euros to a bank account or yes. But can I ask another question? So, but then in the end, like let's say I accepted it uh, today, uh, then in the annual report next year, is that you know, it, like I, I accepted some it, I have to maybe there's some VAT associated to that uh, transaction. I'm, I cannot uh, wrap my head around uh, like does it need to be converted like to equivalent euros, you know, to, to keep everything in euros or? No, no, you, 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 as uh, in merchants, you decide what you are doing. But, I mean, the, but yes, if you are accepting uh, accounting, the size will yeah. have to know uh, what you yeah, store. At the end of the month, I will have to uh, pay the PAT, right? That I collect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something you do in euros. You do in euros. That's what it is. So yeah. I accepted some ETH, but then the VAT associated to that transaction is whatever. The value of ETH was that day, or right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. but this is uh, account the accountant uh, can uh, yeah yeah, yeah. But yep. I see that but with all these free options that you described, also with this this option free, there's a lot of steps, a lot of uh, like risks, also 
there's not some seamless uh, way to accept crypto and get euros immediately no no this is the biggest problem in uh, in this field but uh, I, I i see there is a lot of companies coming this field and lot lot of the de development is coming there is a example Pundi X is the i think the is the biggest who will give um, merchants also the terminal and the uh, wallet pass it's like card and if you in as a merchant you have this uh, terminal you can uh, also sell to client through this terminal uh, crypto but when i'm selling the bicycles <laughs> why would i have to sell crypto because to my clients uh no yeah this is like uh, marketing yeah but uh, but, but uh, anyway it's not seamless way to accept crypto and uh, get euros Immediately. immediately not not exactly. immediately yes but uh, there is you need to do some extra step yeah but if i have let's say like 10 employees there's also risks that if i'm on location someone will do it and the risk is uh, for sure for sure yeah yeah yeah, 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 who, yeah absolutely who that kind of solution? if you have very good trust then you don't have it <laughs> okay let's say i have 100 workers no, there is okay. What for if you use decentralized wallet system, you can uh, synchronize all your wallets, and after they end, you will send all tokens away. Example, cold wallet. You can. This is a one one tip. You what you can do. But I have uh, right now. I have one client. Uh, uh, he has uh, in clubs, and he want uh, to implement uh, this crypto system, and he want use only decentralized system because you want to full control to start this this uh, this uh, providing and he 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 decided to do this way and um, it's very good every every day ending he will send all tokens away and he have full control also what he's sold but and actually yes. as you are descri describing <clears throat> You need also some account manager or like crypto trader who will uh, end of day will uh, collect an overview of your uh, daily crypto and uh, start to sell it, change it, send it to your bank account or whatever. This is like full time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are some service providers who yeah. solve this problem also, but they're just uh, missing out right now. There's uh, literally hundreds. Of yeah, they have they have a lot, but. Uh, like BitPay, Coinbase, and Coin Payments is also, uh, I think they have uh, a the very big one. history. Yeah, they are they are best one and they are biggest. I mean, they have this system. If you if you buy Bitcoin, example for me, then uh, I can choose uh, what the system can do. This uh, it can uh, switch uh, fifty percent stablecoin, example, uh, or or whatever. But in, in the merchant side, also you have, you can uh, accept uh, half of your product in cryptos. But do you agree that 99% of uh, today's merchants, they want to get euros because uh, euro is the base and there's only one or two percent who are like enthusiasts or want to give something to crypto, but the basically use cases from crypto, Absolutely. accept crypto, but get euros. Absolutely. They want, uh, yeah. But I think it's also a use case. Like, I guess I talked for myself. Like, last year I was earning in euros and getting those euros and buying some crypto to hold. So, mm -hmm. so there's also the use case that you might want to have, I guess, part of your balance held in cryptocurrency. Yeah, you can diversify also yeah, yeah. if you get, uh, yeah. Okay, and also one, uh, I think the important thing is support. If you use decentralized system, you don't have support. Or wallet problem, you don't have support. A service provider, you, ha you have support. This is very good. Okay, I think my time is uh, over, Astra. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me.
if you say so. <laughs> uh, for my side. Uh... Yeah, but uh, some questions I of have. One. <laughs> so, uh, as a professional, uh, what what do you recommend if I am like if I'm not familiar with crypto? I'm selling bicycles and I want to accept crypto. So, what to do? Start the educational part. For first, or yes. And how much it will make? Uh, depend uh, how good your average. brain brain is. Average. Average. <laughs> I, I think, uh, for my experience, I see ten hours. I have been working uh, one to one. Some clients ten hours is very good to get uh, some good basic understand because we are playing, and I asking. I, I and uh, I think ten hours is very good. Then let's say if I have uh, five workers, then I have mm -hmm. to spend uh, 10 hours per worker. So it means 50 hours for educational part before I can start to implement some uh, provider. Yes. It's quite expensive. Now we can um, think also like this, that you don't have to educate all the people 100% um, knowledge. You can just, um, let's say, give 10 hours for one employment employer employee and um and the others can let's say take it take the course in um, you know one and two uh, one or two hours just to get to understand what is what is the crypto yeah, yeah. Some, some or, also also online course yeah online course is also an option and um, online courses more and more coming uh, we see that uh, all the crypto companies are having crypto academies academy here academy there is the trend right now everybody wants to get uh, also the small money so uh, really think that um, it's 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 going to be easier and easier uh, for small companies, for big companies to ad uh, adopt uh, these things. Um, but yeah, Janar, uh, you have this experience uh, um, teaching people one to one. Uh, so, what are the most uh, um, the question, the main questions that you you get uh, actually from let's say companies? Uh, of course, how and what, but what are the main issues you have there when you're mm -hmm. teaching them teaching or coaching a uh, main issue i need to i think uh for for my experience is uh too much information too, too, much, information too much information for... different wallets different exchanges different uh, system and uh, blow mind <laughs> okay so they are kind of uh and they got shocked let's say from the yeah from the new environment and everything yeah mm -hmm. it, it depends also in the in per person mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah but and that's but i like this i like this uh the, i like to see how people are growing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, i like my dif my teaching is also a little bit different i like to explain very simply and uh and yes okay and uh, for estonian businesses what would you recommend um like the first step from where to begin what they should do uh, should they, they um contact estonian crypto association for absolutely, example, and absolutely. Ask advice? absolutely absolutely <laughs> huh? absolutely <laughs> This is what I wanted to hear. Yes, also, absolutely. And also... And what about the crypto association? What is their advice for merchants who want to accept crypto and yeah. the euros internet? Our advice uh, is, first of all, uh, be ready uh, for solutions which are not always the simple one, simplest one. So crypto and every innovation means that uh, you're going to have some issues. You're going to have some new questions. So it takes time, but just give time, be patient. Uh, when I entered into crypto, let's say, I didn't know anything. Uh, I was very patient, but still my, when I did my first like um, transfer, I was like, <clears throat> like, I don't get it. What should I have to do now? Okay, Google, 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 Google. It took me like, I don't know, too many hours actually. So uh, um, for every person, it's uh, individual, of course, uh, but I think the patience together with un just you have to understand that it's a new topic for you totally. It's an innovation and you don't have to feel bad that you don't know anything about it. You just have to start from somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are here to help. Um, I mean, just reach out. Um, 
and we will find a solution. We will give you contacts uh, with who ex uh, you have, let's say you want to have lessons, you want to have teacher, you want to have consultants, um, lawyers, anything, AML questions will rise, accounting, everything. We can give contacts uh, in Estonian jurisdiction so we can help with that, obviously. And if you become become a Estonian Crypto Association member, we can also advise uh, for free consultation. Yeah, sure. Um, so once again, I want to point out that if you are totally new into crypto, um, why you should begin today is that uh, you have in hand so many uh, places, websites, information, YouTube, there's so much information you can actually already get very easily and for free. It just takes a bit of time. And for your, for your business, um, it's, um, it's not going to be uh, too tough uh, to adopt if you're a small business. Uh, if you're a big business, you just have to have a very good at accountant who knows what exactly is done and what must be done uh, at what point. And these accountant accountants are already available in different jurisdictions. Uh, so this is also like a, a year ago, it was a bit trouble to get the crypto accountant. Now it's easy. They're they are doing a good job. Taking also a bit more money than usual accountant, of course. Uh, but yeah, the service is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm talking so much. Um, no, thank you, Jan. I, I want to yeah. add something also. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, you asked me a question that uh, what is the main problem uh, mm -hmm. in the client. But there is also uh, good parties. Uh, some clients uh, told that I don't understand nothing, but this is so exciting. And they just mm -hmm. go to go to. Yeah, yeah. I totally <laughs> agree. Yeah. Yes. All my friends who doesn't know who who don't know anything about uh, how to get uh, cryptocurrency or how to transfer, they don't have any wallets. Uh, they are also the numbers. Oh, how if they see changing. me, yeah, if they see me, they're like, there's something good about it. You know, I have to learn also because you seem like excited. You know, and this is the this is it. You know, so if the world is excited, then you should also be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. Okay, thank you, Jana, for okay. coming and uh, thank you for giving this uh, short intro. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's a yeah, next uh, person we are looking forward to meet with uh, Merit uh, from uh, Merit Late from uh, Token World. And uh, she's gonna, she gonna point out um, important lines regarding to AML, which is anti money laundering um specific let's say uh yeah let's begin again <laughs> if you are a company and if you want to adopt uh, crypto payments the uh, first thing you have to think is that you don't want to put your company on a risk you don't want to get fined you don't want to get into money laundering case right uh you don't want to um get suspicious money or do you want no 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 and uh, this is why you need to, to do the KYC, which is uh, know, know, your, know, your, know your customer, know your clients. Um, how to do that? Uh, when to do that? Um, who is the person who should do that? Um, all these questions come uh, when you take in um, crypto payments in, in, uh, in some specific amounts. And um, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank uh -huh. you, Yanar. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So let's welcome um, Merit here. And thank you, Yanar. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh -huh. welcome to the stage. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm pretty good. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Cool. Uh, so maybe you can do a short uh, intro of your background. Uh, how you, um, I mean, first of all, what is your background like AML, but uh, mm -hmm. how you got into crypto and when, and um, just about that, and then maybe you can go on with uh, with your show. Yes, well, well, totally. So um, my experience um, generally, basically, in financial system is about more than 15 years. Um, so basically all began um, with Danske Bank money laundering scheme. I was their internal auditor, so basically I was the one who <clears throat> is related with that some part, but from regular point of view. And um, 
uh, there I discovered that compliance is so awesome that I want to put my hands on. <laughs> I do want I want to do myself everything. So basically, there <laughs> I went another company where um, also um, I was involved to discover another money laundering scheme. So um, I have pretty good experience in that, uh, and therefore um, this is exactly the same package, which I can say that uh, my employers do not get into that trouble anymore. So I have that experience. And um, in crypto, by the way, I have been now one and a half year, but um, I have my own experience, how I combine my own experience into the cryptocurrency at this point. So yeah, and um, what else? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, that's perfect for the beginning. I mm -hmm. uh, wish you good luck uh, Thank with you. your presentation. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's already here. So uh -huh. just... oh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Some of it now. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm speaking about the minimal legal package to accept cryptocurrency payments. Actually, it's a little bit um, related with the topic. Um, previous um, speaker spoke and um, it's um, I would say that uh, there is uh, let me go and uh, basically I will speak about what is at all this um, cryptocurrency payments acceptance it is um, it's financial instrument instrument basically which is similar to cash transaction and um, all other that. And according to the Law of Obligations Act, uh, it says that it's personal means of um, procedures, which is agreed between per payment service provider and customer. So basically, you start um, uh, to initiate the, the payment order. And um, there is difference who are obligated entities and who are non-licensed. So basically, obligated entity is licensed entity according to the Money Laundering Act. Um, and there is a difference that uh, basically you are uh, obligated entity when uh, you execute or your customers execute the transactions starting from 10,000 euro. This is, this, it can be combined uh, from uh, the whole year or it is separate payments, but it's like the whole year is the payment, like 10,000 euro. For example, this is cumulative. Yes, correct, right word. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, you have possibility uh, to do, or how to say, to accept, in my opinion, because I didn't uh, think about other solutions, but uh, terminal cash acceptance, uh, or basically, yeah, like using card, cash uh, transactions, or using uh, pay payment gateway. Mm, so, if someone do not know what is gateway, um, it means that, um, for example, Air Baltic. Air Baltic now accepts cryptocurrency if you buy flight tickets. So there is, you go online website and you can push the button that um, customer can pay in crypto. So this is the gateway, which is linked to this, um, this um, how to say, who is offering the service and the customer, but it's true, it's true the payment service provider, which um, in my uh, example is like cryptocurrency, like VASP, X is um, um, virtual asset service provider. This is um, legal wording uh, for them. <clears throat> like coin, Coinbase, um, for example, as a payment Yeah, like provider. Coinbase and uh, like um, other, um, like cryptocurrency, how to say, like VASPs, who are licensed uh, under the Money Laundering Act. Mm. So basically, obligated entities, mm, according to the Money Laundering Act, are financial institutions, VASPs are actually under this uh, financial institutions, credit institutions, um, then also um, uh, service providers who are dealing with real estate and um, uh, notaries, auditors, um, <clears throat> pawn brokers, uh, how to say entities who are dealing with art. And um, 
yeah like also of course precious metals stones um so something like that but the main i would say what i have done <clears throat> in my like in my work experience that you set the um, uh, amount limit so even if you are not uh, how to say like uh, named out in the legislation that you are obligated entity who has to um, follow the rules, regulations, uh, internal procedures, and so on. I have set myself even just in case the amount um, limit, because based on that, you can, um, uh, from regulatory point of view, you can uh, mitigate your risks that this system will, I don't know, notify you that, hey, this company or uh, this merchant payments has been, I don't know, increased uh, above um 10,000 euro or 5,000 um uh, regarding non-profit associations for example then other entities uh this um, basically means that i have like i thought that they are uh, entities who are not licensed but still they have to be like uh, registered in um uh, what is it then it's a register of economic uh, activities so basically they're um, everything is traced. Um, basically, some um, companies need to have um, definitely like have registered there because, for example, um, who are giving loans or something like that. So basically, actually, you are kind of um, providing some financial service. So it is important there. Another thing for non-licensed companies is also that um, you actually have to understand um <clears throat> who are your customers uh, because for example from money laundering act it is crucial to understand that person is not sanctioned and person is not pep so basic and also for that to analyze that you need to understand um, for example the name of the customer and of course um date of birth which are, in my opinion, crucial things uh, to ask, even if you are not licensed, you are merchant uh, or, or some other uh, type of entity. Um, yeah, and also uh, according, like, regarding the legal entities, it's also, um, how to say, important to understand whether uh, this uh, legal entity, uh, who are these UBOs, like uh, United, what the, how is it? Ultimate, Ultimate yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you fail. So I'm used to it with that word. Um, <clears throat> so uh, from that, I see that um, how I have evaluated merchants, for example. And my point here is to, um, how to say, explain like this gateway solution yeah like how i have uh, evaluated me as for example licensed uh, um, entity um like merchant one we want to cooperate and um, for example air baltic i am the vasp air baltic is our merchant for example this and so i have used uh kyb which means like know your business uh, by uh, virtual asset service providers which means that there is no actual regulation uh, how to evaluate, how to accept merchants or something like that. But I have seen um, this uh, type or like similarities to correspondent relationship, which means that correspondent relationship is um, between two financial institutions or credit institutions and they are offering or they are dealing with um, account service which means that there are payments between them um so it is like business to business oh my god it's difficult to explain it's it's um like it's not like um that i have only individual customers me as uh, vasp i have legal entity as customer this legal entity has its own customers. For example, Air Baltic has travelers. So this means business to business, um, business, <laughs> basically. 
Um, so it means that you can go, you can do it general level or, um, so I'm speaking about VASP site, but um, this is uh, like for merchants so that they understand. So, but, or you can go more deep side because um, there is yeah, two solutions. So other solution is that whether you as VASP evaluate your legal entity, uh, air quality customers, or you are trusting or you trust the air Baltic and you just do how to say um, random checks you ask um, uh, for example details of transactions or something like that mm, so therefore uh, merchants should also store uh, some data about transactions because uh, it's also um, crucial for VASP to get the information. So therefore, like KYB means that uh, you evaluate the business to business, like the, the big um, uh, model or like the business model. Um, you um, should understand the business, key persons, who are they, customers. And um, as I mentioned, the uh, GDPR requirements. So basically, who are these customers? Um, what is the amount of transaction? Uh, who sent this transaction? So here I'm doing com um, like um, comparison with uh, this correspondent relationship, which is uh, regarding um, credit credit institutions. Um, and um, you need to collect some data. You need to process some data. You need to um, store and uh, for some period because if you are accepting cryptocurrency then in some point um, you are actually indirectly obligated entity, in my opinion. So that's why I, I have evaluated um, these merchants like this way. Um, then also, which is crucial for VASPs <coughs> is that data has to be available at any time. Um, it's also for um, supervisor authorities that um, they also need to have, for example, they do some uh, inquiries. Um, so they ask um, like information that um, you need to provide them. So it means that the same information should be also available from merchant side. side. Um, not that you cannot download some data or um, so everything has to be available and uh, you cannot waste any time because otherwise you may be fined or something like that. Then um, <clears throat> uh, sanctions, as I mentioned, that um, you should do check that um, your customers, whether they are or not sanctioned, like rather not sanctioned, and uh, pep check because this is risk that you are accepting some possible like dirty money corruption pep is like basically like um usually like corruptions and or like bribes or something like that so that is why it's crucial to understand whether the person is pep or not sanctions obviously i can bring out the um, current situation what is happening and um and from VASP side, it's also really important to regularly monitor this business relationship with merchants, because um, it's like, for example, as I mentioned before, for example, doing random checks, ask, um, hey, send me please information about this customer or send me overview about monthly payments or, um, or something like that. And you do some kind of compliance check. Is it uh, ran like random? or is it like regular has to be it for sure. And, um, and again, whether you um, check the company merchant in this case, or Air Baltic, or whether you um, check the customers more detailed level. So, but this is um, also different about um, how to say onboarding, uh, the merchant onboarding uh, stages. And of course, actually I, what I suggest personally, that you always has to have to train, 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 or do trainings. <clears throat> because if you are, as a, I would say, Air, Air Baltic, in my opinion, in this way, is indirectly obligated person. So it means that 
according to the legislation money laundering law, they also have to receive training and it's written out specifically what you need to receive as a training. Like you have to receive, for example, overview of the uh, legislation. You have to receive um, red flag, um, like how to say common red flag situations. You have to receive overview about your internal procedures. For example, me as VASP, I train Air Baltic. What is really crucial and important, for example, even reporting inside, like between the companies or something like that. So this everything, in my opinion, is important. Uh, can I ask one question? Yes. Yeah. So let's say I'm a customer to the Air Baltic, and I'm a fab person. So. How would VASP is going to like? I mean, the Air Baltic is going to uh, verify. And, uh, let me rephrase this. That's, uh, my I'm a customer of Air Baltic. Mm -hmm. Air Baltic uses some VASP services. Mm -hmm. So VASP VASP services has to get the data from the Air Baltic, right? Depends. This is depends exactly the same what I explained or tried to explain. It depends from the VASP how like this correspondent relationship means like as it's not regulated for VASPs but this is what I have used so this is based on my experience so you have two options whether you evaluate air Baltic in general level or more detailed level so you have possibility here if you for example if me VASP check every of air Baltic customer then it means that I have this real, like how to say, responsibility to make sure that they have systems, PEP systems, um, adverse media searches, that they have to have, like whether they accept, like uh, check sanctions, or I will do it in general level, which means that I just um, evaluate the Air Baltic in general level. I ask whether you have internal procedures. I go through these pro internal procedures, then um, <coughs> compile training. So they're like, whether you go detailed level or not. So basically, it's so and so answer. But as mentioned, I'm already a fat person and I'm using the air bottle services. Right? Yeah. Uh, ask if you are what so you cannot like uh, provide the services to the fat person or if you are going no to you can them. obviously you can it's the it's all about risk management usually what i have done is that business is telling what is the risk appetite how much customers uh, like this percentage of uh, customer portfolio how much customers he's or like the company accept as pep mm -hmm. this is totally okay it, it doesn't mean that pep cannot receive any uh, services just the risk is higher there's more more monitoring yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as a pep, uh, yeah exactly guess, exactly uh, but, yeah. and uh, i am not how to say i'm not against business as compliance person but thing is that you have to work together with business they are saying even it, it is um according to the fiu they are even like um have said that you can even accept for example, some really high risk customers from um, high risk territorials, but it's all about business, that how much is the percentage and it's, it's business decision. And then there are risk management systems as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, mean, you could, you I don't know, did I answer your question? Well. I hope uh, I did. <laughs> So regarding the risk appetite, so mm -hmm. let's say you mentioned of the transaction uh, ten thousand amount. Yeah. So let's say uh, if my client is uh, doing the transaction under that, do I have to follow, follow like minimum KYC? If yes, what would you consider as a minimum KYC? Minimum KYC is just a second. I don't know. Do you see somewhere um screen? So this is, uh, but this my uh, last uh, slide is this package to us accept payments in crypto. This is my minimum, how to say like, um, that you have to like check uh, whether the person is sanctioned, PEP, because um, if you are indirectly obligated entity, it's kind of um, required you to do that. But it's again, VASP decision how to do it. I am a little bit more strict in this. So I have said my merchants that I need to do that 
before we like before you can use our I don't know services or our payment gateway or something like that. Okay, I have also some questions. Yeah. So <laughs> let's uh, ask uh, that kind of question. Uh -huh. If we will compare accepting cash or accepting crypto, are there some similarities or are they totally regarding different? amounts? It's totally different because ten thousand starts. I will, it's again like a non profit association starts 5,000 euro. Um, car sellers, 10,000 euro. So uh, you are talking about crypto or about cash? Now I'm talking about everything okay. uh, as obligated entity. But cash is, how to say, cash in this case as merchant is not, how to say, um, not so crucial topic because how you accept crypto in cash? No, no, I mean, if we will compare <laughs> crypto, accepting crypto payments or accepting cash. So nee. let's say I am selling used car, mm -hmm. 20,000, and uh, someone is bringing me cash or bringing me crypto. Is it some? Oh, no, it, this is not different. Yes, mm -mm -mm. This is my point to, yeah. uh, to understand and also yeah. to explain for that, that the, with crypto, there's mm -hmm. something like uh, it's not more scary than accepting cash. No, 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 actually not. Because as I said, according to this law of obligation, um, this um, crypto is as payment instrument. It is, uh, there is no, how to say, from law point of view, there is no specific um, like wording or something like that. So it's said as it's law of obligation. It is also defined in money laundering uh, act anti-money laundering, uh, counter-terrorism, but um, is payment instrument, it's similar as any transaction, I would say, in my opinion, I do not um, do any differences because this is exactly the same like regular money transfer. Okay, if you will compare crypto, uh -huh. with, uh, with compare it with uh, cash or with bank transfer, mm -hmm. then we can say that crypto is more similar with Transfer. I would say it is, okay. but I would say it is because, of course, there are like new requirements, like travel rule requirements, um, because these wallet addresses are not um, identifiable. Um, so there are like other other extra things, but in general way, I I haven't like uh, said that crypto is more bad than regular okay. money transfer. Then would say that accepting cash is more shady than accepting crypto. Actually, I would say it in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> yeah. Because... Legally, right? <laughs> exactly. 32,000. 32,000 it is. Mm -hmm. Can I have a question as well about the, the last license? Yep. Uh, you mentioned that you have to store the customer information. With you. Correct. So can that be outsourced to a third party so that you're, you can actually... It is, but point? then it is as a VASP, you should, what is what I have done again, I can speak mm -hmm. only from my experience. I have evaluated that third party service providers. And there is also money long during act, there is written that you can either outsource or rely on data gathered by third party. So there are differences. But I would say that now regarding crypto, there is also this um, customer KYC database and transaction database because they have to store as well. So it's similar. So again, like it is not written like directly what cryptocurrency like uh, VASPs should do, but this is what I have brought uh, like comparisons like. Yeah, but you don't have to physically have access to that information like your own server. And this is the, own... the same, like you as VASP, you have to have right to receive the data. And there is a, like a usually between um, uh, third party service providers, you are usually also signing a GDPR appendix that if you are obligated entity as VASP to store customer data, transaction data, then they have to do it as well. Otherwise, you as a VASP, um, you haven't evaluated correctly that third party service provider, and I would say that you are not because you are VASP are responsible. So, if you take this third party service provider who is not storing the data, then it means that you get fined or revoke the license. So, is there a way to evaluate those 
Yeah. You Price. should. I like this is what I have done again. Is there a parameter for that? I mean, ask them certain questions. So we um, know that, okay, I ready. have actually slide what I provided last time. There is exactly what I like spoke about. I see. Okay. So, but um, again, I am bringing my own. There is no. There's no set rules. No. That. No. Okay. But this is like my experience. Your, if okay. they have okay. Estonian license, then you can be quite sure. That but this is again like basically it's, it's actually it's pretty similar to this what i'm speaking at this point like you have okay. to understand the business background what is the business in general way who are these key persons they cannot be criminals um, what is their experience are they really like aware what they are doing um, are they educated in this field of activity because i will say that it is really crucial in this business if you're not IT person, like then what do you do in this business? Yeah. Like basically. But, uh, but compare, like if there's a company in uh, Estonia yeah. who's actually doing this as a service. Yeah. So can they be trusted? Like they would definitely. Be this is again, you people. have to evaluate the company itself. Yeah, you have to understand. Of course, it's it's so much easier if the company is already certificated or licensed mm -hmm. or some somehow. This way you trust more this company yeah. as service provider. Uh, but if they are not certified, they don't have any license, then you have to evaluate yourself whether yeah, they are. Very simple. It's case by case. Exactly. Yeah. Risk-based approach, I would like to say usually that. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm going to jump in. Yeah. Also. Mm -hmm. uh, I also had uh, one question in my mind. Uh, the last question um, was very good. and. Let's say for uh, for this very simple company, not a crypto company, mm -hmm. um, because we, we want to make some things clear for them here also. Uh, so what um, what do you think? Um, how they they if they don't have this experience, how they can evaluate these uh, KYC service providers or third parties? Can they um, rely on feedback or reviews on the internet? Let's say, or can they get such suggestions from? other companies or so um, the easiest is explain uh, for example regarding individual customers natural persons I would say because for example natural persons as I said I suggest to implement a sanction screening system then also um, uh, I don't know ask either from your customer that are they pep because like this is simple question for customer, but this way you have already basically like fulfilled the obligation to understand whether the person is PEP or not. And um, then um, like know your customer in short way, like for example, name, full name, date of birth, even these. And further information can come from VASPs like us, for example. But these are really similar, like small things, like uh, you should know your customer and you should even understand yourself that this is reasonable information what I need. Because if you feel that something is missing, then... You can never really get the whole picture, but you can get the basic yeah. information that you mm -hmm. can yeah. do. Yeah, and also, for example, yeah. even... Uh, oh, what I also uh, think that what would be really good, um, in my experience, um, in, uh, for example, this cryptocurrency field of activity, there are uh, systems. Okay, if the company do not have enough resources, but there is a solution that you, um, you can... Um, customer can take picture like uh, from his uh, or he, her document and there is also possibility to do Linus photo so the system checks uh, the, the document what you just did the picture and your own um, like Linus photo so basically that there is also these kind of um, possibilities mm -hmm. thank you um um, have you some slides to show more? Yeah. Actually, or did I jump in too early? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I have, yeah. but I can okay, do please, really shortly. Please continue, and then we will go on with questions yeah. because it's a very, very uh, crucial so, topic. Yeah. Because actually, this um, the, also the key why be what I have asked from merchants or these small um, companies who are accepting uh, crypto. So these are, in my opinion, important um, information and documentation is also written that you have to have, for example, or you 
you are registered business so you have to have some possibility to print it out somewhere that you are registered and you have this proof that i don't know you are registered you are active uh, which is uh, really crucial from my side to evaluate then that you have um how to say like sufficient memorandum of articles that i don't know in some case that even you as owner or even you as employee that you understand even from the article of association what that company is doing who is doing decisions who is like this the structure has to be there for sure i would say like or if it's one uh, man company then obviously it's it's uh, not so needed um then um also like um how this representative rights comes who is doing decisions like do you have power of attorney that or you are legal owner or like to understand this point of uh, point as well then that you don't have any issues with banks because usually um, i have also asked a um, recommendation of a letter uh, from the bank so that uh, in this way i have evaluated whether the company has issues problems and so on so it's a little bit background uh, story and uh, that you have paid your taxes this is also crucial so and also about this key person um, um key persons from the company um it's important to understand that their reputation is really like high level there is no criminal activity and um, that they do have a previous experience to run the business and of course um i also looked at whether you have uh, this um education that you have studied or something like that and um, yeah i mean these risks to be considered um that the merchant um it's it's important to understand that the merchant uh, where which country he's like it's operating where are his customers or like this the company customers um are they licensed which kind of services they offer because if it's also similar to financial um, services there is a risk that there might be shell banks which is really bad bad thing um, but um yeah that's basically my my overview i th I, th I hope that i gave you some a lot of information <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i want to speak more <laughs> yeah it's an interesting this uh, topic uh, mm -hmm. of course um, <clears throat> Uh, I think um, for a person who doesn't know much about anti-money laundering uh, or compliance, it was like, it was like maybe, <laughs> yeah, <know>. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but to to make it more um, easier for them, mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Let's let's take a situation. Uh, selling bicycles is quite popular right now. Mm -hmm. It's good weather outside. Um, so if I go to shop as a private person and I want to buy um, with five thousand euros. Okay, no, that's too cheap. Uh, let's say fifteen thousand euros. So it's uh, it's a magical bike. It almost flies, something like this. <laughs> okay, I would need this one uh, for me. Um, so I go as a private person, mm -hmm. and okay, I want to pay you at a room. Uh, could you please accept? So how the merchant on site to, uh, does the KYC? Um, well, this definitely exceed the limit. You have to already be obligated uh, entity, basically. So um, in this way, there are law obligations already. Basically, you have to have already in this amount. You have to have internal procedures. You have to have person who is reporting to the FIO. So, so I think um, you exceeded the amount a little bit here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, of course. I okay. Did. Uh, you, of course. Uh, I did. Okay. You want to yeah. know about obligated entities requirements yeah. then? It's uh, it's like my, my personal. Um, uh, let's say mm -hmm. I'm a private person. I just want to want to buy for mm -hmm. fifteen thousand euros. What the company has to do at this moment when I go enter the shop? I want to give the money. Uh, well, then obviously there is um, like they have to understand who you are. Mm -hmm. How they can do that? Um, what I think, again, I haven't been in this kind of companies, <laughs> but um, I can say, for example, if um, 
actually what some companies are doing, these loyal programs, it's really an um, interesting way to understand, know your customer, by the way. Mm -hmm. So if you are using your, uh, for example, um, what is it, um, like the car that you are loyal in this, I don't know, Ratemar, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. or a Sportland. Client cards, club Client, cards. yeah, club mm -hmm. card. So all information is already there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you do not have that, then um, they have to ask some questions from you, basically. So then you have to fulfill, uh, I don't know, I don't know how they are doing this, but the laws uh, gives you different ways. Of course, you can interview, you can, uh, that customers uh, fills itself. But according to the legislation, there are different, um, like specific things. For example, full name, date of birth, uh, whether are you PEP, um, then what is your professional? Are you employed? Are you unemployed student? Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, okay, the amount gives you already the idea what is the expected, um, like, um, amount, how much you spend. Then, um, yeah, others, like, this kind of similar things. Mm -hmm. So actually, when we um, think, like in a big picture, mm -hmm. uh, it actually means that with crypto payments, uh, the companies actually can access uh, assess so many risks. Uh, Correct. Because they will get mm -hmm. that data, who you are, from... I am not agree. Say, not agree? I am not agree. I disagree okay. totally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you will take some order that you are sending a used car or apartment, you will have the same, you will have to ask as a merchant, same question from your clients. This is not related with crypto. Because yeah, correct. Yeah, this way I agree. It's actually the mm -hmm. same. same with mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not with cash, even with bank, uh, with bank transfers. If you are selling apartment and as real estate company, you have to ask the same question as a notary. Yeah, yeah. It yeah correct. Matter. Totally correct. Mm -hmm. And to say that with crypto, there's a lot of risk. I disagree totally. Uh, I didn't want to say that. Yeah, yeah my, my, mm, sorry. Then I sorry I did say something uh, wrong. Yeah, the the thing I wanted to say is that um, uh, if you ask data, then if we compare to cash payments, the money I mean the person comes in with uh, fifteen thousand euro cash, and uh, merchant is like, yeah, why not? Let's just take it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, then like compared to this situation, it's like um, it's written it's um tracked mm -hmm. everybody knows what's going on from where it comes mm -hmm. where it goes so on so this is like from the merchant perspective you can uh, um like we discussed you can trust more the employees as well let's say or it gives um another perspective to things mm -hmm. to let's say shopping yeah yeah uh, looking forward to that um, but uh for the company um, uh, what I see is complicated from the AML perspective um, is uh, a new company uh, becomes the obligate entity. Mm -hmm. um, it literally your revenue just like goes a bit higher. Yeah, you just have to put some cost there. Correct. So um, what you have to pay, what kind of services you have to pay for, uh, what kind of person you have to hire. And um, you, you already mm -hmm. mentioned the minimal package is there, but um, but I what I want to give out here, the information mm -hmm. is that uh, you don't always have to pay like full <clears> amount <throat> of this, full amount of that, full package of this, full full package of that. You don't have to be like 100% no, no, perfect. No, no, yeah. You just have to assess risks, mm -hmm. uh, check your um, business, yeah, mm -hmm. what Correct. kind of risks you want to take. Mm -hmm. So what what's what do you think? Uh, what um, let's say if there is a usual Estonian consultant uh, company mm -hmm. uh, and they want to consult uh, businesses in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to take in payments in uh, crypto as a uh, cryptocurrency. So what uh, they have to have, they have they have to have the internal procedure rules. What? Yes, they can do it themselves or um, no. Well, you have to like again, if you are obligated entity and you have to have internal procedures, it means that you have two options. For example, whether you hire person who is compliance uh, like me. Uh, or you let's let's take it very like minimum cost oh, like right try. now okay yeah. very let's, minimum let's talk but, about the cost but oh, okay. <laughs> okay yeah, yeah i'm expensive okay, I, will, I, will, I, will <laughs> I see that you are not on the same page with uh -huh. so if you have that kind of obligation you can download this track from the fiu website
I agree a little bit disagree because uh, there is written in AML procedure that you have to have compliance person. If you as a board member is not compliance, then you have to have someone. And there are like the compliance means also contact person for FIU if no, you, no, are you, are if you are obligated entity. Oh, okay, merchant, but we spoke about merchant. if you have to have no, internal. No. Oh, okay. Merchant, mm -hmm. you are doing some services or selling goods, mm -hmm. and one day or whatever, there's my point is that mm -hmm. there's nothing uh, different comparing with traditional, except in traditional ways, bank transfer, cash, you have to have the same rules, like True. cash even, the, the <coughs> carriers are lower. But um, you cannot copy based uh, internal yeah. procedures from uh, supervisory authority websites because you but have, have to... Items, so you can download it and uh, I uh, okay maybe I have more deeper experience, but um, people we but, talk about let's say we talk uh, about like small companies then but, they 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 don't go usually for like very very mm -hmm. heavy documentation. So let's say it's a one one man company. There okay, but in this way it's it's not that you download because these are only guidelines. How to do it? Well, it's a draft. I say yeah, it's a draft, and then you there uh, isn't any yeah. draft. There is guideline. So okay, yeah, guideline. So mm -hmm. there was a draft. And you have to just tailor it, put your name, really? and sign it, and there was hmm. these requirements. Okay. Maybe now they removed it. Okay, this uh, I yeah. haven't seen any yeah. draft. So for smaller mm -hmm. companies, these are the like, base requirements, what mm. you have to do. Correct. And uh, that's, uh, it's not some rocket science. Okay. Yeah, okay. And when this is done, so mm -hmm. then let's say you have to hire a compliance person or like you want to have this third opinion? Can mm -hmm. you can you get it for I don't know, um, I don't know some hundreds of euros per month? Like just the person who just one hour or two hours per month checks that everything is correct. Yeah, your... that that's possible. Like uh, some parts, like small... part um, how to say partly that uh, the person do not have to be full time. Yeah, yeah. so totally. we, can, we we don't have we are not talking about like thousands of euros. So it's like let's say. If you make the draft, you want to get uh, from lawyer the opinion. Maybe it's like 150 euros. Then you pay monthly for it's one one ter one time. Let's say mm -hmm. maybe. But per hour. Per hour. Yeah. 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 But it, so it means that usually, um, what I have experienced that it depends again. Like if it's really high level, it doesn't take much money. Um, but I don't know market prices myself, so yeah, no, okay. So let's mm -hmm. say uh, from the to the lawyer, you pay mm -hmm. like let's say 200, 300 uh, mm -hmm. for the it's one time per hour or then, per hour. Let's say it takes two hours, so mm -hmm. you pay 300 euros, then doesn't take two hours. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that I am um, so, very okay. optimistic. Let's say I'm a small merchant and I am accepting the group talk in uh, uh, once a month. Mm -hmm. I am uh, like someone is sending me 5,000 worth of uh, euro worth of Bitcoin, let's say that your point is that I'll have to have some compliance person in my company for reviewing these things or yeah. hmm. actually I just came up I just came up another idea that there is also possibility that, that for example um, this law department or whatever the consultants they, that, that they train the person for example who is I don't know one man business that they train the person and then he can write himself so because he knows the best the business i would say mm -hmm. but there are many options um yeah like i i say that that you need to have this compliance person when you are obligated person yeah, yeah. But, not but regarding yeah, merchant small mm -hmm. yeah. Small yeah. Small yeah. yeah the question was about small that you are scaring uh, Potential. I don't know about small <laughs> consultant business. Sorry. <laughs> I know big things. <laughs> sorry. Well, now we had a talk about. Um, uh, okay, we can say that 
we a bit frightened maybe people mm -hmm. away from crypto but what i want to uh, say here is uh, no it's not that complicated oh it's not uh -uh. exactly the same you say that i didn't know anything about crypto either one and a half year ago mm -hmm. so everything i do i just take my experience from banks or financial institutions yeah. and you have like 15 years with this more than 15, yeah, more than 15. yes 15. So it means uh, if you're a small company and if you really want to join crypto mm -hmm. and you want to um, adopt crypto payments, uh, don't go crazy. Yeah. Uh, don't go crazy like like you have been. <laughs> yeah. So crazy. Correct. That's too crazy for us. Uh, uh, but she's a very amazing specialist, mm -hmm. of course, and uh, maybe a person you can get advice. But uh, before going crazy or before taking any decisions, you can always ask advice. Mm -hmm. uh, compliance people, AML people, they're all over all around if you don't know anyone i ask from Estonian crypto association and um and what i want to point out here is uh you can always learn aml by yourself mm -hmm. and uh, it can be very very uh, integrated and, and interesting uh, very interesting mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's not only for lawyers i also learned aml uh, i've been working as uh, compliance and um i'm not i'm not a lawyer Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, people from street can actually begin with uh, ML and KYC as well. And they can, if you are a person who wants an entrepreneur and you want to do your business and you want to understand, you want to understand the um, business models um, from money laundering perspective, you can very easily get this knowledge and uh, get act acting, get, begin acting by yourself. Yeah, so you don't have to pay so much of just learn waste of time. There are also online trainings, yeah. uh, which uh, even I take online trainings. Um, this is also um, very oh, founderly was also I also took that from there. So anyway, any training yourself, reading anything is important. Because the regulations change frequently, I guess as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Yeah, and understand your own business is also very crucial that you understand it fully and you trust it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Does uh, anyone have a question? Yeah. Question. Mm -hmm. So next, uh, so for if I as a boss, I use a, like a payment gateway. So as per the regulation, boss has to do his own KYC, and when the customer is moving towards the payment gateway, they have to do their own KYC for a user. So, mm -hmm. so as a user, I have to do double KYC for the platform no. and then... No. no, 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 no. Gateway means that um, you don't do any double because it means that VASP is doing KYB, know your business, to the merchant. And merchant ask from the customer directly, not we. But it depends again how the system is built up. No, but how can Whether I receive like, uh -huh. uh, so uh, let's say I'm an XYZ company and I'm using the like uh, BitPay as a payment gateway mm -hmm. for crypto. Yep. And BitPay doesn't uh, like cost like what are the uh, UIC I'm going to provide? Because as per the laws, they have to have a like uh, since they are the one that who is converting the fiat to crypto or crypto to fiat, they yeah. have to have a user the information. Correct. And user is on my platform, so uh, my platform I have to have uh, the user information. Right. Mm -mm. Um, it's a little bit different because it's again whether you reliance on the data what is gathered on third party there are different ways so it's a little bit maybe too wide to explain now um, maybe Astra can um, um, share some I don't know okay well you can ask later but the thing is that this is between you and merchant um, agreement who is receiving data who is receiving data he or he or she has or the company has responsibility um, if this um, pay, uh, gate, payment gateway receive uh, data it means that me as a wasp i have to make sure that they are compliant as well so whether you do it in general level that you trust that they are asking uh, some questions or you receive all the uh, information yourself and again um, you have to set the data what is written in KYC. This is according to the legislation, basically in big, in big size, um, like not big size, obligated entities, small size. Again, like you just set minimum package for them. 
Um, but it all depends who received the data and you don't have to double asking is too much, definitely. But you have to agree with that company who is receiving that data. And you have, if you don't receive, then you have a right to ask it at any time and in readable format. So this is GDPR requirements. But isn't like the so if the uh, so the the platform mm -hmm. uh, they will be the first one who is receiving the data, right? Uh, yeah, uh, usually it is like this. Yeah. Yeah, and then the uh, the, uh, the payment uh, gateway they mm -hmm. would be the second one uh, when the uh, client wants to uh, customer wants to buy and sell, right? At that time they comes in a picture where they will be like asking for the KYC. Mm, I would say it's not correct. Okay. That's doing double. So in this way, yeah, the payment gateway, I would this guess, is too uh, much. This is doubling more technical, I guess, from because point my view experience is that, um, for example, I don't know, are you aware with sums up, for example? Yeah. So sums up ask some first questions, which goes to the MASP database. Then comes another section, which are not the same questions, which goes to the sums up system. So there is a difference which data goes to where. But never ask double. This is too much. This is over regulated in this case. <laughs> the answer is that if you are using payment gateway, then your end clients are not making KYC. No, but as a, yes. was, uh, as a was, uh, you are asking the same question the third time already. Yeah, I know, but uh, uh, as per the, uh, the rules, so since I provide the, uh, the, uh, in the crypto space, uh, I have to have a client data and my client can use like uh, uh, any of the like payment gateway. Let's say imagine I have like three payment gateways on my platform. They can use any of it. And now it's depend on me. I can provide like fake. If I have agreement with the payment gateway that I can provide a fake document or like any uh, anything uh, that is not legitimate or they gonna like trust no we will be doing our own KYC because the customer is like coming on our platform and then they are doing it the end transaction on my side of read through agreement I what do you a, have i have because i make payment on bitpay mm -hmm. um, and i have an agreement with ledger so ledger has made a kyc with me mm -hmm. but when i pay with bitpay i have to get an account with bitpay because so, there is a difference kyc uh, database transaction database there are two different things there are service providers who has combined these two um i don't remember what was that but actually i think sums up is doing also but there are some service providers who has combined kyc and transaction database it means that there are two different service providers and that's why there might be this doubling thing uh, that kyc and transaction yeah. that's the because thing i think um, i did it twice exactly and then it means that this is your as a vespa how to say um, issue uh, there there is big risk actually in my right. opinion because how you evaluate your customer and transactions in my opinion they should be in one database because you can, how you evaluate the I business relationship is, you know, when, you, when you open an account with a service provider they have a set of procedure to onboard you right mm -hmm. correct so you go through that correct and then at the time of payment uh -huh. you present it with bitpay or you know then bitpay wants your data so you end up doing mm -hmm another account creation with BitPay. Correct. It's cumbersome, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, but, okay, again, yeah, sense, but, but again, but again, yeah, it, but know? again, um, it means that, that the legislation sets different mm -hmm. uh, forms of data for KYC uh, on like onboarding and for uh, transaction data. These are two different things. Right. So that's like a client onboarding process. Correct. Anyway, go through and then do Correct. The process, Correct. Do process. But okay. this means that you are doing this only because service providers are different. Different yeah. services. Yeah. Yep. So this is already really... for the customer actually. It's not really good. Yeah. And that's why I have uh, suggested to my like employers where I have worked at it. It's really simple if it's everything in one database. It's easier for customer to do that. And easier for employer, e e easier for a company, because everything is in one place. And there is a risk, like, for example, the KYC database, I don't know, you are doing transactions, but KYC database 
do not recognize, um, for example, you are doing transaction and the system uh, detects that you are PEP or you are sanctioned, but they are not combined. So yeah, it means that you're- other companies in other jurisdiction, it's a French company, then you're mm -hmm. paying in a US yeah, company. It's a, you it's yeah, it's a big risk. It's a big risk from compliance point of view. So it's advised to maybe go for an Estonian payment processor in case you're- I would say not just Bitface, not Estonian. Yeah, no, yeah. I will just say that uh, that those would be combined wherever. Okay, it's it's I good. I think BitPay would do that for you. Ah, uh, well, I don't yeah. know about BitPay. I, these these are so many pays. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was deep. Uh, Anyone yeah. has a, some simple question? <laughs> <laughs> any, any tips or recommendations on uh, like a noob in this topic? Uh, where could I start to learn more apart from reading the AML Act? Yeah, actually, uh, AML Act to start is too good. much to start. Um, first, Google. Second, go FIU page or yeah, FIU is more simple. Um, or go on to Stöstu Square, Koto Koto, Koto, how is it in English? Chamber of Commerce, yeah. yeah. There, um, usually, um, like uh, small companies are um, regulated uh, or not regulated, but they are, um, I don't know, they are there. <laughs> so I suggest to uh, maybe go to their website. Um, yeah, read uh, Supervisor Authority guidelines and take um, i don't know small online courses where i started and go yourself through um if you don't if you are not uh, experienced in cryptocurrency go through other i don't know merchants go through other their process then you maybe understand better way competitors mm -hmm. the world is so big right now yeah. the internet is wide and uh, estonia is it's still uh, one of the best uh, places to make business, let's say, uh, mm. e-commerce and everything, but um, but we can still uh, compare us with different other jurisdictions, especially when it comes to Correct. services. So even Agreed. if the law is not the same, we can still uh, check how they do it and mm -hmm. we can implement easily. Yeah. yeah. And then ask your <laughs> friends. Mm -hmm. Estonia is uh, very small. Uh, if you can ask Estonians, if you don't know any Estonian, uh, ask us um <laughs> then if we don't know anything in estonia we cannot answer to you then we will ask um, from our lithuanian friends let's say they're also uh, anyway that goes now uh, a bit mm -hmm. of choking but anyway <laughs> yeah, I have a, yeah. A, a general question yeah, thank like you some yes. countries the governments uh, some are seeing cryptocurrency as an opportunity and others are seeing it as a threat how is it in estonia because i'm not from estonia uh, is the government of Estonia like pushing for cryptocurrency because it is being viewed as an opportunity in general or uh, not that much? The legislation has changed multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take that or I'm going to take that? Take that. Thank you. <laughs> That's my one of my favorite questions. Uh, yeah, Estonia is um, one of the, you can say, um strictest one we can say right now when it comes to crypto uh, regulations and legislative uh, part um, but we can also say that we are one of the most innovative uh, in european union and um, the future is interesting because we see that uh, from governmental uh, level they really want to get innovation into the e-governance uh, um, into different um, shapes of um, public um, services and um, it begins from there if a public um, um, service provider understands that the innovation is something they have to keep on moving with then this crypto payments and uh, crypto currencies and uh, the crypto adoption will just it's aligned with the general idea of innovation. So even though we right now at this moment we have kind of um, small problems in a crypto regulative uh, sphere, um, uh, we uh, the crypto association we see that um, after one year or something, um, Estonia will be back to the old very good position in, uh, in crypto business. Why? Uh, especially because uh, right now 
you can say the money launderers have been leaving Estonia. Uh, clean ones are here to make a real business. And um, Estonian Crypto Association also um, works towards that. The government understands and sees uh, that innovation is uh, so much needed. It's um, and um, yeah, so Estonia is in the, at a very cool stage right now. It's very interesting. It, it's um, not so interesting for the companies who have um, bad feelings about let's say Estonian FIU and they have left Estonia because of some um, licensing issues. Um, but generally, uh, the, the ones who stay and uh, the ones who want to support Estonian uh, environment, business environment, uh, they will see um, blooming. I think after one year, it takes a bit of time. Yeah, this understanding comes. And we are in a very good spot right now because uh, the mainstream is beginning to understand uh, what is actually like good and what is bad. Yeah, people are getting to understand. Like in Estonia, I don't know how you guys see it, but uh, in, in my, uh, like, um, let's say if I have Facebook friends, uh, I don't know, 800 or something, uh, I see that how many of them are into some um, what topics they are into yeah so and the crypto is growing there like daily like daily it's it's really cool to see that a year ago it wasn't like that in estonia at least yeah i don't know and the strictness yeah. that you mentioned <clears throat> comes mainly from these ML act it comes from my ml act uh, it comes from uh, the the the, um, the mistake that estonia Mm -hmm. did previously uh, i was very innovative wanted to get you know all the service provider and a lot of people were coming yeah, yeah they were too open with uh, giving out licenses um but it's very cool uh, to give out licenses and you should do that but it's just uh, somebody has to check also what these licenses license people are doing otherwise it's not a license thing you know so that was the mistake and the, the part what was missing there yeah nobody was kind of checking what they were doing and there was no knowledge uh, level to check that. So now we are improved, uh, and we we can say that um, it's a fascinating moment. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also like even though maybe strict compliance rules can be a pain from a business point of view, but it, also, it, it I think long term it can be good for the reputation of the jurisdiction. Exactly, and what is happening right now in the AML sector, anti-money laundering sector, is uh, Estonia is begin, be, becoming number one in Europe. Uh, when it comes to experts, uh, people who have uh, knowledge and understanding and experience. And um, it's amazing to be in Estonia in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. And also cases, what we have. And when you experience those mm -hmm, cases, mm -hmm. the more you know what regular regulator wants and so on. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we are optimistic. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, thank you, Merit, thank you. for your. <laughs> Presents. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. And let's welcome uh, here. Yeah, pe people are here. Please feel free to take wine and uh, water and um, to have some snacks there on the tables. Um, just feel free, and we're gonna um, we're gonna take our next uh, speaker. Hello all. Uh, thank you for your attention. So before in introduction i have some question for you but who are you yeah first questions then i will continue as i told so who we have today here with here with us is um evald hannes green crane a very long long name but okay hannes is your name and you're from swapping yeah from okay. swapping what do you do you're a ceo or you're um the founder you are everything there or? i am not everything i am a founder and uh, swapping is uh, one of the oldest estonian crypto companies also swapping is one of the fo uh, founding members of the estonian crypto Correct association if you didn't yeah, know it, it was uh, named <laughs> not swapping before yeah yeah, right? our, yeah mm -hmm. we had rebranding we started as a peaks pay but uh, peaks pay we can spell it in estonian uh, language but if you have a uh, someone from UK, then to spell Pixie Pay, it's not possible. So they are naming it, they named it Pixie Pay or Pixie Pay or whatever. And uh, okay. uh, 
uh, beginning of this year, we decided to, uh, to change our name. So, but uh, as I understand, today's uh, topic was uh, how to accept crypto as a merchant or how to accept crypto payments. So my question for you, how many of you have, have used some gateway like points paid, point payments, BitPay, Utrust, something similar? One, two, three. <laughs> Okay. Good opportunity. Yeah, yeah. this is like uh, the more than 10%. Maybe yeah. some guys know it also about yeah. something like they that. They will not raise their hands, <laughs> but they know it all. <laughs> so, and um, what uh, we heard today, or what I heard, yeah, okay. Uh, also, I prepared some slides. Yeah, <laughs> and where are they? Where are they? Where is our, Where is our... Other room. Should I get it? slide master? Yeah. <laughs> well, just a second. Uh, you can maybe begin with... Uh... Come on, where are the slides? Where are the oh, slides? <laughs> Interesting situation. What are but... there in the slides? Do you know? Yeah, of course I know. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe you will... We are so sorry. Give me... Um... I will take care of that. And yeah, no worries. Can... So yeah, but uh, I will continue with my questions. Which computer? I have slides here. Yeah. Uh, so um, let me uh, take care of you at the situation of slides, and uh, maybe, maybe yeah, you can, can yeah. share, and we can add them later. Mm -hmm. So for mm -hmm. me, it doesn't matter. Are okay. there slides or are they coming later? So crypto payments are still crypto payments. And one Bitcoin is always one Bitcoin. <laughs> so uh, what uh, what merchants want usually? 99% from merchants wants to accept crypto and they want to get euros. Even better if they will get it with some minutes. This is what actually they want. And they want seamless solution. They don't want to get like cheated they don't want to fight with volatility they don't want to uh, fight with their uh, like uh, threats or fears for losing their uh, like keys and if we are talking about like business owner owners or small businesses then the issue that Jana described before it's smaller, but if we will take business where you have like 10 employees, 100,000, who is going to hold the keys? Who will the broker? Who is the crypto expert? So too many, too many questions. And uh, with Swapping, we faced these issues uh, like two, three years ago, before our business focus for for was more for private users and uh, we worked with uh, like before also with crypto payments and with a little bit different segment but uh, some years ago we realized that crypto spenders are on the race and the number of companies who wants to accept or already accepting crypto currencies it's raising there's a lot of uh, newcomers, new wallets. Uh, there was like in 2019, 20, 21 crypto boom. And uh, after that, or on the same time, we started to go more deeply to B2B segment. And we started with e-commerce. And there are three problems. First, merchants wants to accept crypto. They want euros. Second is volatility risk, because merchants want to, if they want to get thousand euro, for them it's problem when they will get nine hundred fifty, or it's also problem when they will get more, to the taxation, for accounting. This is volatility risk, but not only for merchants, but only also for payers, because payer want to be also sure that. 
if uh, he sends like two Ethereum, this is enough and no one is going to ask later, please send to 0 0.2 more. I agree, makes sense. So, and the third one is uh, uh, accounting issue, as the previous speakers uh, discussed, that there's a lot of steps. You'll have to change, send, maybe use different platforms. You don't know how much, if you, let's say, if you are like small business, business owner and you have one transaction per month, and you will get like a little bit less or more euros. This is not end of end of the, the world, but it's still complicated. But let's say some of our clients they are getting thousands of uh, payments per month, and let's take if we are sending settlement payout once a week for them and sending just hundred seventy thousand euro. What their accountant will do with this amount? How? they will match or link it with the invoices. So, and this is what we are solving. We are solving also all of the accounting. With uh, swapping, each settlement will be paid out separately. And with the same, the transaction or invoice number as merchant is asking it. So we will solve three main problems with one service. And, uh, there's, if we will take, like you mentioned that you have small business, you wanna accept crypto. We have solutions for e-commerce where a checkout process is uh, done uh, via uh, like integration or via checkout, but we have also solutions for traditional businesses, what are like invoice-based businesses where merchant will issue PDF or paper invoice, and they can accept crypto and get euros instantly. And um, with that kind of solutions, uh, we don't see that the requirements are totally different when we are talking about uh, traditional ways. So, in our opinion, we are not going to give you legal advice, but what is like the key points for understanding if you are choosing merchant, one good, uh, if you are Estonian company, I see that you'll have to uh, prefer Estonian partners who have license and clear understanding what they are doing. There's uh, many providers in Estonia who are offering that kind of service. Second uh, one is the compliance. If uh, let's say you are uh, not obligated entity and you are accepting crypto, we don't see that there's needed some separate person or some AML specialist or lawyer if you are accepting crypto just like once a month or this is not your main activity. So if you are following all the rules according to AML and Estonian laws, so this is quite enough. And yeah, slides, uh, Gabe. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah, thanks. So uh, as I told, I'm not going to touch these slides. They are maybe too specific, but uh, if we are talking about uh, accepting crypto, there's a lot of things changed with last six, seven years and when uh, we started with this, then the main focus was for Bitcoin. And uh, Bitcoin network was fast, it was cheap. And we built many solutions top of this uh, experience. But what happened? The Bitcoin network is now very slow, it's expensive. And with some kind of services, like if we will take terminals, where you, you are using uh, a terminal for uh, like some flash uh, uh, deal, like buying ice cream, then it's not possible to use Bitcoin for this case. But uh, we are also monitoring our cl client's behavior and we see that market is changing every year. And uh, when 
Bitcoin boom ended, then there was emptiness. Also, crypto market was down many years. And the new wave came with uh, stable coins. And uh, also, at the moment, we see that uh, stable uh, coins are uh, more and more dominating if we are talking about payments. And also, I have a question. What do you think? How big is the average crypto payment if we are someone is buying something from eShop or something like this? Question for you. What do you think? No idea. 525? Okay. 525 euros. 250. 250? 2,500 or 250? 250. So? I can also make a guess. 1,000? 1,000 euro? 200. 200? 250 maybe. 800. Eight, oh, I was close. <laughs> you win. Let's yeah, show yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, you will get one more. <laughs> <laughs> How do you notice that? Okay. Okay, so crypto payment accepted here. Yeah. You can also donate in Britain. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this is this is reality. And uh, also, I see very big potential with within crypto payments. But uh, what is uh, like reality? If we will take average merchant, then and if we will uh, take how big percentage of the volume is based on crypto then it's less than one or two percent usually this is reality and it will take time and our expectation is that mass adoption will start not before then 2025 or later this is this is what we are thinking as a swap in and uh, on grounds of what uh, this expectation comes yeah we are uh, monitoring uh, many aspects like uh, how many newcomers uh, how many new uh, registered crypto wallets will be issued what is market situation uh, with crypto rates what is uh, situation with providers uh, some expect <laughs> expected volumes and uh, this is how we see it, that in one two years there's nothing uh, very like big is not going to happen. And also what we will see that the current solutions, if we will take stable coins, they are actually big step ahead if we will compare them with Ethereum or with Bitcoin. But uh, definitely there will be new solutions with faster and cheaper and more efficient networks. Also- Greener, yeah, yeah, efficient. Yeah, I mean, greener. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Because uh, this, what is uh, at the moment is uh, related with Ethereum and all the mining, this is uh, not sustainable. Who is your exchange partner? We are you by are. ourselves. Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, who's your liquidity provider? We have we are working with all bigger ones, finance, Kraken. Mm. And uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of good things happening also uh, at the moment, but uh, I see that the whole area is. Is there any regulatory issue when you deal with finance that is uh, making sure that the fund is not fund is clean? Is there any issue on that side? If we are using them as a liquidity then uh, we are not doing them like particular or like specified trades or, or OTC so for us it's we are not affecting about this because they are regulated provider and there's no issue with dealing uh, or doing business with regulated partner and uh, Yes, do you have some questions? Uh, as I understand, uh, here are many guys who want to ask about how to accept crypto. What are the like, what is seamless uh, way to do it, not to uh, get uh, stuck in uh, some uh, process or uh, some uh, 
to do multiple KYCs for one user and TTC? I see here is one yeah, question. So I want to know about your yeah, payment, like in the like payment provider solution, like uh, I, I'm sure you cannot do it or like you can put this way. So like do you see, I mean, have you like uh, come across some compliance issues that you have searching for the payment providers? Sonia as well, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not secret that this is one uh, like uh, very hot topic for all crypto companies. And if you are a small one, then uh, it's even harder if you are like starting starting with some project. But in certain of uh, uh, volume, the situation will change, and uh, you can start to choose your partners and we are working with uh, multiple uh, UK white label providers and uh, some Lithuanian providers. And we are working uh, to get our own EMI license in near future. So then we will be bank by, for us by ourselves. In Estonia, we hope so. Not in Estonia. Oh. <laughs> not, in, again. not in Estonia. Come not in Estonia. On. We are looking for <laughs> to have it in yeah, Estonia. There's uh, one possibility. <laughs> Buy LA3. <laughs> okay. Interesting. But uh, from your experience uh, all these years, uh, how many years you've been actually active on this uh, business already? In this business I am in, um, uh, in crypto space since 2014. At the moment, I am. Uh, I have uh, different roles as a founder, as an investor, as an advisor. And uh, yeah, I can say that I have seen a lot of different models, projects, uh, market crashes. So yeah. And one thing is that crypto is always recovering. <laughs> this is what I can say. Yeah, crowds always uh, are. We we can say we always have someone to take in on the, to the boat, let's say, uh, because there's so many people who are not yet into, right? Yeah, the good, good part is yeah, that uh, most of uh, uh, the, yeah, there's uh, like hundreds or thousands of uh, or even more newcomers, uh, newcomers uh, than mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. existing thousand mm -hmm. times newcomers. Yeah, but um, I have one question more, and then I will give a word. I'm so sorry. Um, when we talk about uh, small, big companies in Estonia, Estonian companies using your services, uh, what have been the, um, uh, the best use cases, let's say? Um, yeah, actually, we have uh, two kinds of uh, users. We have users who have crypto, and they are using our uh, exchange and uh, payout services. And we have uh, users who want to accept crypto, and get euros mm -hmm. and they are traditional businesses uh, e-shops e-commerce uh, different players platforms mm -hmm. and how these uh, companies do they do they know anything about kyc aml are they solving these issues themselves yeah uh, or buying in or... yeah 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 this is a very good question so the answer is uh, so and so we have uh, like uh, clients who are who knows very well like real estate companies what they are doing and uh, we can also separate uh, our clients like uh, the usual as i told e-commerce uh, average uh, payment is 800 euro and this is absolutely different if we will compare it with some uh, uh, real estate company and uh, like average uh, apartment is 300,000 euro. So, and with uh, real estate company, they have already their internal rules. They are asking basically the same questions mm -hmm. already. Yeah, they're kind of if, easy uh, to Yeah, this, this uh, all of uh, real estate uh, goods, they are uh, registry goods. So you'll have to uh, visit notary. So notary is asking, and uh, with uh, this scenario, the, the whole sales cycle will cover also the AML questions, what are related with crypto or what are mandatory for doing 
that kind of uh, crypto deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Vatan had one question. Yeah, I have one question. A very simple one, a stupid one. Um, so you are a super founder, I know that. You're very smart. Um, when it comes to crypto space, what would you like to change? What would you like to change in this space? With one day, with one year, or? It doesn't matter. <laughs> what would you want to change? Like okay. your vision? Please ask again this question. What would you like to change when it comes to crypto space? What would you like to disrupt? Okay, I have an answer for you. So crypto is very small part from blockchain technology. With blockchain technology, things are moving very well. With crypto part, I see a lot of scams and this is not, uh, or this is what I see that uh, this is like very bad. The reputation is bad. Also, it's affecting. Uh, if I can change it, then this is the what I, I want to change. So no scamming anymore. Scamming is always, but <laughs> to <laughs> reduce it. Okay, reduce. Okay, then it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So literally, it means uh, more KYC for all of us. Uh, this is what you want to say or no i also i want to point to each of you if you are participating in some crypto project uh, just uh, they are promising you to get like three thousand percent per year so <laughs> of course this is not very realistic so yeah. this is fairy tale so please do not there's uh, not such a good things in life, so this is we better to buy lottery. Is there a crypto token? association? We have a token? Oh, we? Token, token. Uh, no, no, we don't have token. We are a traditional fintech company, it's and uh, maybe, but at the moment we don't see that uh, we are just exchanges as or whatever fintech. So if you are changing the crypto to euro or Japanese yen to dollar, that's it's a good way actually to sign with him a future token sale deal right now. When he launches. Yeah. <laughs> after, after the meeting, there will be pre sale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I have seen a lot, I have seen ICO times, IDO times. So uh, what happened uh, with ICO companies? Same will happen with most of IDO companies. Mm -hmm. True, so, true, true. And uh, yeah, but uh, this is with uh, uh, dot uh, boom. The same people invest a lot of money without getting something back. So this is one part of life. So, and I don't know how to say it in English, but yeah, if you are brave, then maybe luck will <laughs> come. So yeah, definitely will come. Yes. Okay. Um, any more? We can take more one question. Maybe the crowd has uh, as like not very complicated. One, how maybe? to how to invest in Swapping? <laughs> yeah, this is uh, also official. We raised uh, beginning of this year uh, two million and we closed this round and we don't know this year we definitely are not going to open it but uh, let's see what uh, next year will bring. have to make a room for people who wear the vc uh, i will answer to this question uh, during the next uh, meeting <laughs> <laughs> but there was question uh, so uh, my question is related to more of the accounting side so uh, if you have asked like previous speakers so just for like uh, my understanding, when you report to the, uh, like when you prepare your annual report or report or any financial document, at that time, what price you consider like for your like uh, asset side or digital asset side? So do you like take it like average price or the, like when you are preparing the books at that time? Yeah. This is uh, not related with uh, our activity and with accepting crypto payments because uh, this is more like guys for uh, tax advisors but uh, 
uh, you are asking it as a private person or as a company as a company then you'll have to uh, show these amounts in your uh, balance sheet and it doesn't matter is it a little bit so or so because the values are always changing and volatility is big and you'll have to say when you have 3000 bitcoins then you'll have to write that i have 3000 bitcoins you have <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Of course, he says no. Come on. Who would say yes? Um, thank you, Hannes, for coming, for joining us. Uh, it was a very uh, nice, uh, quick, and um, good overview um, of what is possible and how to make uh, our own uh, life much more easier, we can say. Yeah. Yeah, and also for next time, I prepared slides. We can discuss them. Some other time there was like more deeper overview what how this crypto payment started, how the market changed. Also, we ha I have one historical picture we had in 2016 MVP. It was working with M Tasco. This is Estonian mm -hmm. boss uh, uh, operator. They, are, uh, they work with uh, Telia before. I don't know now they separated. But uh, on, in 2016, it was possible because Bitcoin network was fast, it was uh, cheap, but uh, what happened? <laughs> Nothing to do with this network anymore in these cases. And uh, let's see what life will bring. And I see that definitely there will be changes and in some year we will see something totally new. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so now our, our uh, official part is not over yet. Uh, I want to thank you all uh, with one um, with one song. Is it appropriate? Please to do that. Yes, it is. <laughs> of course, it is. <laughs> thank you, Hannes. And uh, let's continue with um, uh, with. Um, I want I want to thank you all for coming and uh, thinking along uh, with. Estonian Crypto Association and with also the private minds we have here. So in, in order to move on uh, further with the more with with strength and focus, uh, we always need to understand where we are right now. So a short um, overview of the moment of now, in my opinion, is is like this. Uh, Estonia is in a very exciting moment, exciting moment where we we can't wait what's going to happen next year, and the the market will definitely go higher. Of course, if we don't consider wars and all these things, we don't know yeah what's gonna what can happen. But um, uh, generally, we are excited and uh, we want to see how crypto adoption will move on, and we all want to. Uh, be a part of that. We all want you to be part of that. And uh, the, yeah, with the next song, I want to thank you all for coming, and especially, of course, the speakers um, who prepared and gave their insights. Uh, so thank you, Sue, uh, for being there for us. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's let's end uh, the official part with a song. Thank you so much. I will close down the lamp and I will take an instrument. Lights you. Lights, if you must, of course, thank you. And uh, let's take some help here. Oh, who's there? That's some. That's me? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's cool. Let's uh, tune a bit. A bit. It's very cool to say a bit when you're in a crypto event. Uh, so uh, I want to maybe clarify also here that why I am doing this, uh, singing songs in official events. Um, the reason is we are all people, we all need some relaxation, we need some 
moments where they take time off for a second. Not like the whole concert, but just for a moment, for a second. Why not? To enjoy life. Yeah? <laughs>
So thank you again uh, thank for you. coming, for joining us. Uh, feel free to network and feel free to feel free in the future and today and now and so on and so on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.